How's it going everyone? My name is Ben and today we're going to be talking about my experience going to Dr. Alan Doolin in Plano, Texas for my top surgery. So I had top surgery about three weeks ago in Plano, Texas and the reason why I picked Alan, Dr. Doolin was because he had the no drains technique and he was relatively affordable out of pocket compared to other top surgeons. Now today's video is going to be about my experience in his office, my surgery experience in t with him but other aspects of my surgery we're going to be covering in later videos such as you know on the method that he uses for surgery um post-op care and how to reduce swelling and how to improve recovery and all that other jazz will be covered in other videos today's video i'm going to be talking about how i felt going to his clinic did i feel safe did i feel com feel comfortable and my overall experience working with his staff and of course the surgeon himself so first off, I want to say that I am an out-of-town patient. So what ended up happening is that my process is a little bit different from people in Texas going to him. People in Texas will eventually have a pre-op appointment a few weeks before the surgery where they will do labs, while people from out of town actually do their labs the day before uh, the surgery happens. But before that, you have to fill out this uh, form that the nurse sends you and in the form you give your basically basically you give your detailed medical history and you kind of self-report it they never asked me for my medical records from my primary care provider or anything like that they, they kind of just trusted me to input my information on there which I thought was kind of odd because when I was talking to my primary care provider about getting top surgery she was like well they'll probably have you send your labs from home to them from our office and or have your records sent to them but their office was not like that at all it was a, a little bit different and i was kind of surprised by it as a medical student as by someone who like checked out other doctors potential doctors before and their process of handling um out-of-state patients but for him it was pretty simple you just call them uh, schedule the appointment after you get all your paperwork done if you want insurance unfortunately my insurance didn't cover my surgery after all that goes through, you schedule your appointment and you can schedule the really awesome thing about his practice is that you can schedule a, a month away and other doctors, like there's doctors that have wait lists up to six months, three to six months away. So I really like that, that I was able to schedule it pretty quickly. And something interesting that happened with me and my experience is that I ended up having top surgery during the COVID-19 pandemic. So you'll be seeing, seeing me wearing a mask throughout all my all my videos that we've taken in the office space because I had to wear a mask that was a requirement and they also did temperature checks before you enter the office so they were being incredibly incredibly safe when it came to uh, COVID transmission as far, as much as they can be a, in a clinical practice doing surgeries so that pretty much sums up my experience before I landed in Texas to go to their office it was pretty simple, pretty fast, pretty efficient. And, and whenever I had a question, whenever I had anything else to ask, the nurses would uh, respond immediately within days of my email. So I really, really appreciated that. Also, I do want to note that there is a $500 deposit for you to secure your appointment, but that deposit goes to your total price for your surgery. So you're not paying any additional costs to actually hold your place to have that day for surgery. So when I landed in Texas, I ended up staying at an extended stay and I highly recommend this uh, this hotel because it's literally a five minute walk from the nearest grocery store and it made getting supplies super, super convenient, made getting food, getting um, medical supplies super convenient because I realized some of the stuff that I had pre-bought for my surgery wasn't actually the things that I needed post-surgery. So I highly recommend the extended stay, I was here and it was only a mile and a half away from the surgery site. So the Uber rides were only about like seven to eight dollars each time I had to go. So it ended up being super, super convenient for me to stay at that extended stay. Now we're gonna be talking about my first visit before my surgery. So when you're an out of town patient, they schedule your pre-op visit the day before your surgery. So my surgery was on Tuesday, June 9th. So my pre-op was on Monday, June 8th. 
and it was a pretty seamless process um but i will warn you that it does take a pretty long time to go through that first pre-op appointment because they just have a lot of history questions that they will reiterate with you so all the things that you self-reported in online to them they will once again verify that with you uh and it won't it won't be dr doolin who sees you primarily it will be his nurse and dr doolin is current nurse right now i believe her name is lexi but lexi did all the paperwork uh, she ran through all the paperwork she asked me about uh, my caregivers because they have to make sure that you have at least one caregiver to take care of you for the first i believe 24 hours after your surgery and she also confirmed my pre-op uh, instructions they gave me this uh, dynahex soap that i was supposed to use and use to wash my body the, the night before surgery and the day of surgery before I go to the facility so I use that Dynahex wash which by the way I bought Hibiclens. Dynahex is so much better so I highly recommend not going out of your way to buy Hibiclens because I see some doctors recommending it. Dynahex is just as effective but it's so much more soapy and Hibiclens just feels like a liquidy solution and it smells weird and it's pink. It's weird. Hibiclens is just weird compared to Dynahex. So they give you that Dynahex solution to wash with. Um, they ask for your consent to either be filmed or to have medical students there to see your procedure. Obviously because of COVID-19, uh, they weren't having any medical students, but I still denied having people there other than the people operating on me and helping with my operation. And also I consented to having my pictures taken because I'm a person of color and I don't see a lot of brown bodies being represented in the galleries of most top surgeons. So I, cho I chose to have my pictures taken. So that took a while. So all in all, it was a pretty seamless experience. They had my lab, Lexi did my labs as well. She drew my blood and they said they will do a rapid test to make sure all my markers ended up being fit for surgery. And luckily, two weeks before my surgery, I actually went to my primary care physician just to make sure that I was in a healthy condition to have surgery done. So that was pretty seamless. It took about an hour and a half to two hours. Um, that was the longest appointment I actually had other than the surgery itself. And it was pretty seamless. And Lexi was super nice, super comfortable. All the nurses in the facility were very good at making everybody feel comfortable in there, being really generous, being super nice, answering any questions that we have. And then near the end of the appointment, Dr. Doolin comes in and just introduces himself. And he asks, he only stayed for about like five minutes with me because I didn't have many questions because I'm super anal and I did all my research. But I really enjoyed that he was super friendly and he kept asking me if I had questions. Like he, there are surgeons out there that have an idea of what kind of surgery they wanna do on you. But when he examined me, had me, had me derobe, and he had a look at my chest, he explained the whole entire procedure to me. He was extremely knowledgeable about the procedure. I felt safe and comfortable with him explaining things to me. I also felt safe and comfortable with him touching me and realizing that he will be basically doing my surgery. So he made me feel very safe and I really appreciated that. I will say that he's very, very quick and fast. He's in and out in a minute, but that's how most surgeons are, most plastic surgeons are, because they have a huge patient, you know, roster and they have to get through all those patients in a day. But I did really appreciate that he continuously kept asking me if I had questions and he never said it in a condescending way. He just made me feel so, so comfortable. So if you go in there and you have questions, he will answer them. Like he did that in the pre-op, he did it during the day of surgery, and he did it in my post-op appointment as well. After your appointment, Lexi will give you a number of prescriptions to go to the nearest CVS and fill out your prescriptions, and it's pretty simple. Now, before we actually go into the surgery room, there is a nurse who makes sure that uh, you do a urinalysis in the bathroom. And it's pretty simple and straightforward uh, until that. You wait until the nurse calls you in, and then next thing you know, you're in a gurney, <laughs> uh, you're, you have disrobed, and uh, the nurse anesthetist is there. And Dr. Doolin steps in for a quick second, asks you how you're doing, asks you if you have any question, he marks you up. Then the CNA, the nurse anesthetist, will administer a mid midazolam or some sort of benzodiazepine to basically put you to sleep. And I don't really remember much after that. I remember being in a really, really white room with big flashing lights coming at me. And that's all I remember. I remember waking up after that 
and the same nurse was there and she was like how are you doing Ben and I think she kind of expected me to be kind of loopy but um I was loopy in another sense because I was a medical student I was like yeah the anterior grade amnesia worked really well and the nurse was like what are you talking about dude <laughs> so um, the nurse was surprised that I was able to actually have a logical conversation but I think my logical conversation was my loopiness working in the way of a medical student type a medical student so that was super super funny and usually they have the caregivers come in and pick you up in that area and they give uh, the caregiver instructions on post-op care but because of COVID-19 my caregivers weren't actually even allowed to enter the facility not even in the waiting rooms or anything like that they actually had to leave and come back and get me but it was pretty simple uh, my significant other came um, called an uber they picked me up I was able to get up by myself I was in a lot of pain but luckily it was manageable and I got in the Uber car, we went home, and we did caregiving. Now, there are two other appointments that you'll have to stay stick around for in Texas. One is the one-day post-op appointment, and then the one-week follow-up. And that's usually on a Wednesday or a Friday from what they have told me before. So the day after my surgery, I'm going to be honest, I was incredibly uncomfortable. I had to keep using the painkillers because I was in so much pain. But not only did they have me wear this, um, I'll show you guys. They had me wear this vest, which I'm actually supposed to wear for 24 hours for one whole month and then half a day for three more weeks after that month. But they had me wear this vest, but on top of it, they put an ace bandage and I was incredibly swollen. So it made me incredibly, incredibly hard to breathe. And I was having a lot of difficulty, but luckily the first post-op appointment when you go which also is a very, very quick appointment. Uh, my significant other went inside with me. They take off the ACE bandage and they open you up and they see whether or not you're doing well. Essentially, you're not over bleeding or anything like that. And I was incredibly swollen. My, my significant other took some pictures. I'll post them right now. And uh, I was happy. Like you'll see, uh, even though I had a mask on, I was incredibly happy that I got the surgery. My significant other was super happy for me. It was a really, really touching moment for the both of us. And, you know, it made me really emotional. Like it's making me emotional right now thinking about it. But, um, yeah, it was, it was, it was an amazing day. I got to see myself in the mirror. I was super hunched over because of how, um, how much in pain I was, but also the bandages they put on my nipples and in my incision areas, they literally pulled my skin down and my muscles down so hard that I had to be hunching over the entire time for about a week until they take, took those bandages off. But that was pretty much it. They made sure I was okay. Dr. Doolin stepped in for a quick second, again, asked me if I had questions as usual. And um, my significant other joke, does he ever have any questions? Because I usually never do because I've done so much research on it. And uh, you will also notice that, ha that they attach maxi pads across my incision line. And that has to do with the surgical process that they use. And Dr. Doolin did explain their surgical process with me, but I'll share that in a future video coming soon to a YouTube channel near you. And after that, um, they instructed my, my partner and I to change the pads every single day and to always keep this compression binder on. I'm allowed to take it off for like an hour at a time to clean it and dry it. And it's hand wash only. But other than that, I had to keep this binder on. And this binder does get really uncomfortable. I'm not going to lie, it gets itchy and you have to take Claritin and things like that. Uh, but other than that, the ACE bandage was no longer on me, so I was able to breathe again. But I'm not going to lie, the first two days with having a mask on and be, being it, it being hard to breathe was incredibly difficult for me. So I, after like five hours of my surgery, I started walking about 30 minutes around my hotel room as much as possible just to make sure that just to, because it helps with swelling, it helps with healing, it helps the recovery process. So I made sure that I was active for a little bit. So about a week after my surgery, I was feeling a lot better. I started getting a little bit more range of motion and my appointment again was super quick. They took the bandages off, which by the way, worst wax job of my life. I have some videos that I'm gonna post like right now. You're doing good, Ben. Yay, there's a nipple! <laughs> Yay! You ready for the armpit? Yeah, oh. I'm okay. Come on. 
get one more. <laughs> Say hello. <laughs> Luckily, you, you lose some feeling, you know? Yeah. So, <laughs> not as terrible. Ah, you got it. You got it. You got it. Oh, baby. All done. <laughs> well, with one side anyway. Yeah. <laughs> But taking off those bandages were incredibly, incredibly painful. I don't think I've ever experienced pain that bad in my life before. It was pretty, pretty intense. They had to use this adhesive remover. Even after that, my whole torso was sticky for about two more weeks. So I ended up looking up the brand of adhesive remover they use and I bought a whole box by myself. They gave me like 10 packets, but honestly, that wasn't enough to remove all the adhesive. It took me a couple of showers and a number of those adhesive remover pads for finally for my chest to stop being sticky. Again, after the bandages are removed, Lexi gives you the post-op instructions about nipple dressings, which are which is pretty similar to other doctors' nipple dressings procedures, except instead of using something like Neosporin, they uh, recommend Aquaphor ointment, which makes sense because a lot of the surgical research data out there is it's actually not the antibiotic that's helping the nipple heal. It's actually the moisture the solution provides. So we ended up going with um, using Aquaphor ointment on my nipples. And that was to be done for three weeks. And then I sent Lexi photos three weeks later. And she determines whether or not I need to do it for additional weeks or not. But that was pretty much it. Dr. Doolin comes in for one last time, asks you if you're doing okay, tells you that the bruising and swelling is normal and it'll go down eventually. And I had a bunch of questions for him in the last day. I finally thought of some questions and he answered them all. And finally he left, we left. And the next day we flew all the way back to Atlanta. And currently I'm almost at week three of my surgery. One thing that I really do wanna mention really quickly is that we did have a problem with this office being not very aware of non-binary identities and they them pronouns because my my partner is non-binary and they they kind of screwed up their pronouns and i had to have a little talk with them although they are a trans affirming place it doesn't seem like they're very well educated in trans issues and uh, and non-binary identities and i think that's something that they need to work on and so if you are a non-binary person looking at this video and wondering if this is a safe space for non-binary people, I do want to warn everyone that although they affirm what I call binary trans people, they're not very, they're not very affirming to non-binary identities. And I think that that's something that we need to have a constant discussion with them on, with that practice on. And nowhere did I see like safe space signs, trans pride flag signs or pride flag signs. So it's just one of those offices where the practitioners make it a welcome space for trans people, but they don't necessarily look into trans advocacy. So that is my one huge, it's a pretty huge critique of that practice, but I want to be super, super transparent. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you guys tune in for my other videos I have on the Top Surgery series and the Top Surgery Recovery series. And I'll be showing you guys all the little neat, neat tips and tricks I know as a medical student to recover in the best way possible after Top Surgery. I love you guys so much and I'll see you on the next one.